Good morning, kids. I'm Mrs. Jen, and I'll be leading you in a part of God's great story today. I am so glad that you've joined me to worship our amazing promise keeper. Let's take a look at some of the story symbols that we have learned about God's faithfulness so far this season. I'm just going to show you some of them, okay? There's quite a few of them, and preschoolers, you might not recognize all of them but probably a bunch of them anyways. I'm just gonna show you all of these. Lots of different stories where God showed his faithfulness to his people, right? Do you remember this snake? Yeah, here we go. I bet you don't recognize this one, huh? Or this one? Yeah, how about this one? We've got some sandals. What do we do with sandals? We go walking? Some stars? What do you remember about stars? And some rings? Oh, I've got a ring. I'm married to somebody, right? And that was the last one that we talked about last week. Now, they're hanging up by you at the church so that you can kind of take a look at them again too. I'm curious, what was your favorite story? And why did you choose this story for your favorite so far? Uh, in which stories that I just showed you and that you can see on the wall, did God make a promise to someone? What did God promise and to whom was the promise made? What did the people and persons do to make God sad in that story? And in which stories did people disappoint God? And what did they do to disappoint him? And in which stories did the people or person, uh, or sorry, in what stories did God show that he still loves people, even though they do wrong and sinful things? I bet you know the answers to those questions, don't you? I'd like you to pause me right now so that you can chat with the person beside you about these questions. You can chat with Miss Janelle about that too. And when you come back, we will sing our first worship song, Walk by Faith.
remember last week when we blessed the whole congregation at the church? You can use these words whenever you want to bless another person. So our remember verse comes from number six, verses 24 to 26. Let's go over the actions real quick. It's actually our last time to do these verses. Next week, we'll move on to Isaiah, okay? So we've got uh, Lord and bless, keep, Lord again, shine, gracious, Lord is one last time, face and peace. Okay, so last time again for today, let's stand up together. I'd like to hear you say it nice and loud because I know you know this by now. Okay, are you ready? All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Number six verses 24 to 26. Okay, I'd like for us to pray together. In fact, I would like for you to form a circle. Can you stand up and form a circle in your group at the church? I'd like for you to stand with your arms spread out far so that you're not too, too close to somebody else. Make that circle nice and big. If you are at home to praying with us, then I would like for you to just hold hands with the person that you are with right now. Okay, so are you in your circle? Good. I would like for you to repeat each sentence after me and let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for your promises. Thank you for keeping each promise. Thank you for always loving us. Thank you for always hearing our prayers. Thank you that you are always with us. Thank you that you are always faithful. We love you. And all God's children say together, Amen. All right. It is now time for our preschoolers. Those of you who are ages three and ages four, you can stand up, or actually you're already standing, aren't you? <laughs> and you can go with Jane and with Natalia. You are going to go to classroom five to, to learn your own Bible story. See you later, see you next time. Okay, Cov Kids, ages, kindergarten to grade four, I'm going to show you your story symbol for today. Here it is, you see that? Here is today's story symbol, story symbol. I wonder what it might have to do with our story today. Let's find out. Now, today's Bible story, which is a part of God's big story, will show you again how God is faithful. This time to Jacob. Yes, even to Jacob. The guy who had to run away from home because his brother Esau wanted to kill him for stealing his blessing. Do you remember that from last week? Our story can be found in Genesis 29 verses 1. It begins with Jacob on the run. Let's say our story litany together now. A story, a story. I'll tell you a story about... Hi kids, my name is Jacob. You remember, don't you, how I tricked my father Isaac into giving me the blessing instead of my older brother Esau? No wonder Esau wanted to kill me. My mother told me to run for my life to my uncle Laban's house. I bet you wonder what I was thinking as I walked through the desert in that hot sun. Remember, I was going to a place I'd never been before. I was going to meet relatives I didn't know, and my brother was after me. I've got my, my hat on to shade me from the sin, sun. I've got my bedroll. I've even got my knapsack. But I've got a lot of emotions too. What would you have been thinking and feeling if you were in my sandals? Yes, I had a lot to think about. 
after I left home, I walked for many days. Once, when I decided to stop and camp for the night, I rolled out my blanket. I fell asleep and had a very strange but exciting dream. In my dream, I saw angels walking up and down a ladder that reached right into the heavens. God was standing at the top of the ladder. I heard God say, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. God also promised to give me many children and bring me back to Canaan. Can you imagine that? Despite lying and tricking my father Isaac and my brother Esau, God still loved me, me. And God was going to bless me, just as my father Isaac had promised. Right then and there, I promised to worship and serve the Lord. How would you feel if you had done the bad things I did, and then God blessed you with wonderful blessings? You got it. The next morning, I rolled up my sleeping roll, my blanket, and kept walking and walking and walking. Until finally, one day, I came to the land where my uncle Laban lived. In the distance, I saw a well and some shepherds gathered around it, waiting to water their sheep. Do you know Laban? I asked the shepherds. Yes, we do, the shepherds answered. How is he? I asked. I wondered, what if my uncle is no longer alive? What will I do then? But the shepherds answered, Laban is fine. Look, here comes his daughter Rachel with her father's sheep. I was so happy to find my uncle's family that I ran up to Rachel and gave her a big hug and kiss. Tears of joy rolled down my face. Well, I must have caught her by surprise. What do you think she was thinking when I, a stranger to her, came up to her and did that? I think you're probably right. So I quickly explained who I was. Rachel was happy to meet a relative and she hurried home to get her father Laban. I sat down and waited by the well. It wasn't long before I saw Uncle Laban running across the fields. We went home together, picked up my blanket, and the next day I began taking care of the sheep for Uncle Laban. So now I was a shepherd. One day, Uncle Laban took me aside and said, just because you're my nephew doesn't mean that you should work for nothing. What would you like me to pay you? I didn't hesitate for a second. I'll work for you for seven years if you will let me daughter marry your daughter, Rachel. You see, by then I had fallen in love with Rachel. She was very beautiful and she loved me too. Uncle Laban had an older daughter too. Her name was Leah, but it was Rachel I wanted to marry. All right, said Uncle Laban. After you work for me seven years, you may marry my daughter. I was so happy, I almost jumped for joy. Every day I went to work in the fields, carrying my staff and herding the sheep and doing everything Uncle Laban told me to do. I worked hard, but I loved Rachel so much that the seven years seemed only like seven days to me. When the seven years were up, I had a talk with Uncle Laban. My seven years of working are over, I said. Now, please give me Rachel to be my wife. So Laban invited all his friends and relatives to a great wedding party. When night came, Laban brought me his daughter. Her face was covered with a veil as was the custom in that area. That means it's a tradition. Here is my daughter, Laban said. Take her to be your wife. How happy I was as I brought Rachel to our house. But the next morning, when I looked at my new wife in the light of day, I saw that it was Leah, not Rachel. Uncle Laban had tricked me. He had given me Leah to marry, not Rachel, whom I loved. Oh boy, what do you think I was feeling when that happened? What would you have done if that happened to you? I'll tell you what I did. I ran to Laban's tent and shouted at him at the top of my lungs. What have you done to me? Why did you trick me? My uncle 
had his excuse all ready. Oh, he said with a smile, where we live, it's the custom not to let the younger daughter get married before the older one. But don't worry, you can have Rachel as your wife too. All you have to do is work for me for another seven years. And that's exactly what I did. Rachel became my wife, but then I had to work for Uncle Laban for another seven years. That's 14 years that I worked for Uncle Laban. During this time, the Lord blessed me and my family. My flocks and herds grew in number, so I had lots and lots of sheep, and Uncle Laban became rich too. You know, I guess it served me right. I had tricked my father Isaac and my brother Esau, and now my Uncle Laban had tricked me. But do you know what? God was faithful to me. God never left me. God kept his promise to me. God gave me many children. The beginning of what I knew would one day become a great nation, just as God had promised my father Isaac and my grandfather Abraham. God's promises were all coming true. Now, looking back on our story symbol, I'll show you again. Here it is again. What does it remind you of the story now? Jacob now had two wives, Leah and Rachel. Do you think maybe this is one of his wives? Now, there are also lots of things in today's story to wonder about. This is a big story. Let's discuss some of these with Miss Janelle. The questions are, I wonder if Jacob told Uncle Laban and his family about the terrible things he did to Isaac and his brother Esau. Do you think he let Laban know? The second one is, Jacob was the one who tricked and lied to his father and brother, and now he is the one being tricked. What do you think of that? The third one is, Jacob was such a rascal. He sinned. He did bad things that hurt other people. Why would God be so good to Jacob? The next one is we do sinful things too, don't we? What kinds of things do we do? And does God still love us and keep his wonderful promises to us? And the last question, what do you think this story shows us about God? All right, let's pray together. Get into a comfortable prayer posture, one that is not distracting for other people, okay? And let's talk to God. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness, for loving Jacob in spite of his sin and blessing him on top of it. Thank you for loving us in spite of our sins, for blessing us, and for keeping promises to us. Amen. All right, I've got one more song for you. This one's called Faithful. And after that, you are going to do an activity for your grow section with Miss Janelle. And it is God is faithful through all time. You get to draw some pictures. And then your show challenge. And Miss Janelle will talk uh, to you about that too. Okay? So have a great rest of the week. And we'll see you next time. When it 